You know, when I was preparing this topic, top five ideas for May 2021, I came across this article by Phil Town. And it states how to tell when a read is on sale. Long story short, this article states price to book value is actually a very good indicator whether a read is still on sale or not. That inspired today's tutorial. Five names of reads listed in Singapore and they are all trading below book value. So your next question may be why are they still trading below book value? And a simple answer is because COVID-19 pandemic has not run its course fully. That's why there are still concerns whether offices are going to be fully occupied. There are still concerns whether shopping malls can recover back to its heydays or not. So this window of opportunity may be closing, but it probably is still there. Now, if you stay to the end of the video, I'll actually summarize for you in terms of price to book value, in terms of sector, and in terms of most important, the gearing ratio, because that allows them to acquire new properties. So with that, let's move on to the video itself. Hi guys, welcome back. Now the first name on the list owns actually Wisma Atria and Nian City. This read is none other than Star Hill Global Read. Now Star Hill Global Read is focused primarily in Singapore. As you can see in this chart over here, almost 70% is in Singapore assets. There are some in Australia, some in Malaysia, but predominantly it's retail business that they are in. Now Nian City and, and uh, Wisma Atria are pretty old malls. In my opinion, there are more tourists that are there or foreign workers, foreign domestic workers that actually shop around there. So I'm not too sure many millennials are actually there or not. But surprisingly, if you see this over here, you realize that tenant sales has actually recovered back to comparable to January 2020 before the pandemic. So this is actually good news if you're an investor or it's actually comforting news if you're looking to invest into them. The second part to note is that their net property income has actually been relatively stable. You compare it against the previous year, they did not lose too much in terms of revenue, which is good. And it also shows that their occupancy in terms of retail malls are actually still pretty strong. So there are good indicative factors and that they also have a gearing of only 35.9%. Starview Global Read does not seem to have acquired a lot of new assets along the years. They're kind of like an old dinosaur kind of read. So if you can get it at a cheap price, possibly it's still of good value. Number two on the list, OUE Commercial Read. Now, OE Commercial Read is slightly different from Star Hill simply because the focus is actually on offices. Let me pull up this portfolio composition for you to see. You realize that they also have retail, small percentage, 14.8%, but predominantly is office. And take notice also, they have hospitality assets. So if you're thinking, hey, what is exactly the hospitality assets? It's Nana and Crown Plaza as well as Mandarin Orchard. Now, these are two that are affected because they are hospitality assets. And as we know, if there are no tourists, hospitality assets are among the worst hit. So back to the officer space, let me show you the crown jewel of OUE Commercial Read. It's quite obvious, it's actually OUE Bayfront. Now this banking new property is really doing very well. It actually has 100% occupancy. The location is fantastic, it just faces the Singapore River, so very nice. But its other assets are kind of languishing. One Raffles Place, OUE Downtown Office. So these other two assets are not doing that well, below industry average. But I also want to show you in terms of the rent wise, what are they delivering? If you see on the top portion, Singapore offices, they are actually climbing in terms of per square foot rent per month, correct? This is across a seven year span of things. In Shanghai, on the other hand, where they have an asset there, which is the Lipo Plaza, you realize that the rent has actually been falling. I guess it's a bit competitive over there. And that for Mandarin Gallery is not doing that well also. So the key question is, will travel bubbles be able to help OUE in those assets? Because simply, they have hospitality involvement also. So if the Hong Kong Singapore travel bubble can take off, maybe there'll be more tourists that can eventually flow to its two hotels over there. So that's a key point to note. They have offices, they have hospitality, and that is how OUE actually derives its profits. The leverage is at 41.2% and the sponsor for OUE Commercial Read is none other than OUE itself. Number 3 is none other than Maple Tree North Asia Commercial Trust. Now this read is pretty popular. I've been looking at comments and I see it mentioned quite frequently. If you're not familiar, let me show you a little bit of what it owns. They own assets in Japan, they own assets in South Korea. They also own assets in Beijing. This is actually Gateway Plaza. It's actually an important contributor, data I'll show you percentages. But the most important part of Maple Tree North Asia Com Trust is actually Festival Walk, which is in Hong Kong. Now, I don't even remember the story. Hong Kong actually had some rioting, correct? 
So this is actually a scene. They actually had a lot of damage to the mall itself. Festival Walk actually suffered because of that riot. Protesters actually went to trash the mall, created damage. And then the good news if you are an investor is actually they've actually settled an insurance claim as of last year. 263 million in terms of insurance payout. That equates to 46 million in terms of sing. That is why you should always buy insurance for your property if you own because you know disasters can happen. Uh, very rare, but you know if it happens, you don't want to have any losses. So the 46 million, where is it reflected or how is it calculated? I just want to dig up something. As I circle over here for you to see, you realize that the fair value has actually changed by 46 million. There probably is an adjuster that went down, a new value that went out to the mall. And then they have actually written off 46 million of the mall itself. That's why the compensation is for that amount. But the key part I want to highlight to you is in terms of net property income, you realize that it has actually dropped significantly. They lost about 50 plus million compared from 2019 to 2020 when that incident actually happened. You realize that Festival Walk is a key contributor. It's almost half of the portfolio itself. The second contributor is actually Gateway Beijing, and this actually contributes 20% thereabouts. So back to Festival Walk, the footfall has recovered quite significantly. This is good news. You realize that it's trended up so recovering retail sales, footfall, that is good news. And the most important part is rental revisions. It could already have bottomed out because when the mall has been destroyed, when the footfall is low, there's a lot of you know, uh, rental revisions they need to do downwards. But right now with things recovering and normalizing in Hong Kong, I guess that could actually have bottomed already. So looking back in terms of the five year dividends per unit, you realize that it actually peaked up in 2018, 2019. Then the situation in Hong Kong happened and then COVID happened. This REIT really could recover in my opinion. Sponsor is Maple Tree, which is good. Maple Tree can actually inject new properties into this REIT. And then at leverage ratio of 41.5%, there is a chance they can acquire something down the years. Number four is actually Singapore's largest China-focused REIT. And before I get that, smash that like button. It's taken our team hours to produce this for you. Hopefully it helps you in your financial journey. Again, if I need to press on the subscribe, join our family become more financially savvy. Now this read is none other than CLCT, Capital Land China Trust. And right now what you see in the portfolio, 50% is in Beijing, 17% is in Guangzhou, and then there's also 3% in Shanghai. They are tier 2 cities in terms of their property uh, allocations. And in general, I want to show you, the shopper traffic has also recovered quite well in China. I guess they are very stringent with their COVID measures. So after all, you know, they have a lot of surveillance and stuff. You've seen it when it was back in 2020. And then quarter on quarter, you realize that the recovery is pretty strong in terms of their malls. Tenant sales have also recovered strongly. So all in all, if China is able to recover well and just rely on domestic travel, I think they are still pretty okay. After all, this is in tier one, if not tier two cities, whereby people are a bit more affluent. So a quick snapshot is their retail assets. You realize that they have many, many malls over there, top malls in China. But the interesting part about CLCT is actually they are moved towards business parks and data centers. Now this is actually mentioned before, but moving forward, they'll be looking to acquire assets in this direction with a sponsor, Capital Land, having some assets to pump into this pipeline. So the key part that I would like to address for you is if they are able to pump new assets, cap data centers, business parks into this, it will change the over concentration in shopping malls, correct? We shall provide more stability. And right now you realize that the gearing ratio is actually pretty low at 32% thereabouts. So moving forward, CLCD could change drastically. If you're okay for that risk, then this could be a read that you should look out for. Now the fifth read is another very popular read and rightly so, simply because it owns very good assets and that read is none other than Landy's Global Commercial Trust. Now in the comment sections, I've seen this read being brought up quite a few times. So finally we are covering it. And Landy's Global Commercial Trust actually owns only Two properties, very simple to understand. The first is 313 Somerset. Now, if you take the train to Somerset, confirm you have seen it or walked through it or you actually visit there quite often. For myself, I actually go there almost every week. So if you bump into me there, do say hi also. I actually met a fan from this channel also at Jewel when I went there to chew with my wife. So I did introduce myself that time well enough. So if you're watching this, leave in the comment sections. I'll be keen to introduce myself a little bit better this time around. Now back to the mall itself, 313 Somerset is very popular with millennials. If you go there on weekends, it's crowded. So it don't only depend on officers and stuff. It's very popular with Singaporeans. Now the second asset to know is actually Sky Complex Milan. 
if you're based in Singapore, you're probably not too familiar. It actually has a master lease, which is tenants it out to Sky Italia. So this mall is actually 100% occupied and apparently it's actually doing very well. How well? Let me pull up some numbers for you to see. You realize that this actually explains how to understand this read. Just two properties. 313 Somerset, which con constitutes 61% of income. And then the Milan property, which constitutes 39% of income. They also have other investments for this REIT itself, but small stakes in JAM and in the car park area beside 313. But those are not too significant. The main part to note, these two properties, and they also have a very low gearing ratio, 35.5% if I were to show you in this chart over here. So the key part to understand this REIT's performance, actually to see the footfall for 313. And thankfully, it's been doing quite well. It's also been recovering a lot of tenancy. So previously it dipped down, but then it's recovered significantly. So the occupancy rate for the mall is also pretty strong. Now Lendis Global Commercial Trust actually IPO'd about two years ago at 88 cents. So if you buy it now at less than 80 cents, you're actually kind of getting a discount. So that's my sensing of things. I don't know how well they are gonna acquire properties down the years. They don't have a lot of track record in the direction, but at least its purchasing price now is actually cheaper than the IPO price. So keep that in mind. With that, let's move on to the summary so if I give you what I promised, the table for all these five, for you to make a quick decision which one you actually like. If not, just buy a whole basket. You can actually buy Scythe Read Plus, which I mentioned before, I'll leave links below. But let me give you that summary table right now. Now check out this summary table over here. What do you see? You see the price to book, you see the sector, you see the gearing ratio. So the key part is sector actually affects the sentiment of it. Gearing ratio gives the possibility it can acquire new assets without raising rights. So that actually explains things. So let's go through one by one. Starhill Global, the price to book is only 0.69, which is really low. But do note also, the assets are pretty old, especially the Singapore malls. OUE Commercial, 0.68, possibly the cheapest as of this time of filming. But also they have hospitality assets which are reeling right now. Maple Tree North Asia Commercial, this price to book is 0.76, pretty cheap. Of the five, I think this is actually the most interesting, in my opinion. Strong sponsor, overseas assets that they could recover. Number four, Capital Land China. So this one is going to morph itself very differently. 0.91 in terms of price to book. Also very interesting and very low gearing ratio. They could really acquire data centers and business parks in China. Last but not least, Land Lease Global, 0.93. Closing in to price to book, a discount that is very slight, but also this read owns quality assets. So hopefully I've given you a good presentation. Leave your thoughts in the comment sections, which you prefer. I'll be keen to hear from you also. So if you haven't seen, let me introduce you to the April top five ideas. In that video, you'll see Vietnam equities, you'll see India equities. And India right now is having this COVID-19 explosion, but the equity sector over there is actually still doing quite well. If you haven't seen it, inviting you there. And with that, I'll sign off. Smash on subscribe. We're launching one video like this every month to help you with new ideas. With that, I'll sign off. Take care and goodbye.